Hello, this is Chef Janie and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to be making beef stock. Uh, what I want you to purchase is a large cow bone. Now, you can pr uh, purchase these pre-cut, but at the commissary they do not have them pre-cut. We're going to sterilize our blade and our saw really well, and then we're going to go out and I'm going to hand this to John, and he's going to take this outside and cut it. Wee! That's a cow bone right there. Then we also want to purchase a couple of packages of uh, beef ribs. Now these have more meat on them, but uh, what we want is we want a lot of uh, bone. The bone is what gives this its character. Now while you're at the store, I want you to check out their parsley. And if it looks good and healthy, then I want you to purchase just a large bulk of parsley. Now, I, now on a gentle rain under my faucet, I'm just going to rinse this. And then on paper towel or a nice clean new white cloth here, I'm just going to pat this dry. Now next, I purchased a whole bulk stock of a celery. And again, we're just going to get in here and we're just going to clean these stalks really well. And we're going to use all of this. I mean, it's for beef stock, so it's fine. Leaves and all. It's going to go in our stock. And here we have one large red onion. Uh, any type of onion will work. Two really nice sticks of leeks. Again, one will be for my chicken stock and another one for my beef stock. So we'll take it over here and we'll wash it. Okay, and for our leek, we can just throw it all in there. That's perfectly fine, but we do want to wash it first. And we want to wash it upright like this, because you'll see that dirt in here. I'm going to open this up, see that? Now we want to get rid of all of that. Now a lot of the flavor is actually up in here, but the strongest flavor is on this end. So it depends how much uh, oniony flavor we want for our, our beef stock to have. So I'm going to use more of the greens and a little less of this part. Okay. On the leek, we just want to cut off this root end. You don't have to, but I certainly do. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to cut off just the tips a little bit here. Get rid of those. And we're just going to cut these. There we go. Just large chunks like this. There's plenty of that. And then I'm going to give it a little bit of this. Oh, a tough leek. I'm just going to give it just a little bit of upper flavor. And that right there is enough leek flavoring for me. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're just going to take these baby carrots and we're just going to wash them really well. And then I'm probably just going to take and just slice them into some large chunks. Just like that. And that's perfect for our stock. And as far as the onion goes, we're just going to give it a cut like this. And you can do this with the skin on. As you can see, it's red all the way through. But this still has a small skin on it, but I'm going to go ahead and throw it in there anyway, because when we put this through the strainer, all that's going to stay behind anyway. So just cut this up, and we just want to cut this in some large chunks, like so, and that's good enough. Okay, now I've just chopped my celery into large chunks. And I've chopped my carrots into large chunks. Now I'm just going to rinse these bones where he's cut them with that saw even though I bleached and cleaned the saw blade. I still want to make sure that that's good and clean. And I'm just going to sit these down inside my roasting pan. Again, we're going to do the same thing. There's no spots there. And we're going to do it with the last one here as well. Oops. I'm just going to take the beef ribs here and I'm going to add these to my roasting pan as well. Making sure that the fat side is down. Now try to get as much of this meat exposed as possible. Because this is where we're going to get the flavors and the coloring for our broth. So as you can see, I've got as many pieces of the meat as I can exposed to the surface. Now I'm going to add half the vegetables. Here are half of my leeks, and we're just going to sprinkle those across here. This will give 
these roasted vegetables some nice flavor in our stock. I'm gonna sprinkle in oh about a third of the carrots. Remember this is where our collar and our flavor comes from. It's from the roasting. And I'll show you that in a minute. Okay. And we're gonna put in about half of our onion. Get some nice flavor. And then we're gonna put in about a third of our celery. Okay, let's put that right on there. And I'm gonna go with half the celery, there we go. That adds a nice flavor. Then we're gonna add just a little bit, just a little few sprigs. We're gonna stuff these down in there of our parsley. Now remember in your beef stocks, you can't use anything like cauliflower or broccoli. Those flavors are way too strong and they'll cloud up your uh, stock. We're just gonna add a little bit of water to our pan. Just enough so you can see a little bit of water floating on the bottom of the pan so our pan doesn't burn up. And we're gonna set our oven here on bake at 450 degrees. That's 450 degrees. And we're gonna roast this for two hours. Okay, I'm just gonna add a little bit of time my roasted vegetables and beef. Okay, and we're gonna add more of this when we simmer it. I'm gonna add just a little bit of rosemary. This is all from my garden. Not a lot. It's a big rosemary stand. It's pretty fake, fragrant. And then I'm gonna add some rubbed sage. Nice big pinch out of there. Okay, that'll give our roasted vegetables some nice flavor. At this stage, I'm also going to add a little bit of ground pepper. Okay, and I'm going to add just a little bit of rock salt. Now we're going to put this in the oven at 450 degrees for two hours. Coming back to check on it about every 45 minutes. Still here at simmering. Let this cool for about five minutes and then I'm going to put all the bones and pieces here in my 16 quart stock pot. And I use a stainless steel stock pot with an aluminum clad bottom. Now you never want to use an aluminum stock pot itself. You don't ever want aluminum to touch your food because this causes mercury to bleed into your food. And you don't want mercury poisoning. Now I've also selected a stock pot that has a glass domed lid. This will help put moisture back into the stock. And this also, if you can see here, has a steam vent. And that's important as well. Okay, and I'm just going to lift these bones. Oop, almost lost that one. Put them here the bottom of our stock pot. Some of them are going to be stuck to the bottom, but that's okay. I'm going to show you how to get these out of the pan and how to deglaze this pan. Okay, and you can see that we've put all the bones here in our stock pot. And what we have left over is this fat. And I'm going to take and drain this fat off, and I'm going to come back and show you how to deglaze this pan. And this is a very important stage for stock because it's this coloring and this flavoring of the roasted vegetables that are stuck to the bottom that gives our actual stock its flavor and it's a very important step. So you cannot skip this step. Okay, here you can see I've turned on my bridge element. I've got my front burner, my bridge element, and my rear burner going. And that's perfect for this long pan. And here I've drained the fat, and you can see what I have left here is this chunks of black roasted vegetables on the bottom of my roasting pan. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to deglaze the pan, and I'm going to add about two cups of water. I'm going to bring this up to a simmer, and then I'm just going to scrape these, mm, these wonderful, still very full of flavor pieces of roasted vegetables off the bottom of the pan. This will save us about, probably about an hour of cleanup as well. 
you're going to see this is just going to lift this right off the bottom of the pan. See? It's already starting to work. Okay, this took about uh, three minutes, four minutes to bring it up to a simmer. And you can hear my utensil, it's just scraping the bottom of the pan. And when you can feel that it all feels like it's up, and you have this deep roasted vegetables and pieces of meat that have been, you know, that have came up from the bottom of the pan, then you know you're ready to pour this into the stock pot. Plus, this is a very important step to making stock. Remember, the difference between stock and broth is that stock is pre-roasted vegetables and meat, a combination of both or one or the other, and added to your stock pot. Now, this is just an important stage. This is why stock is so rich in color compared to broth. Now, people will say that they make stock, but if you don't roast your vegetables and meat first, you're not making stock, you're making broth. Big difference. Of course, consomme is a little bit different. That has actually been strained several times with an egg white put into the final uh, straining uh, to clarify it. It's a very clarified stock. Now this is done. So I'm just going to shut off my elements. And now I'm going to pour this into my stock pot over the bones. Okay, and as you can see, I've added that broth back in over the top of my bones. And then here I'm going to add more sliced celery, red onion, any onion will do, chopped carrots, and more leek. Plenty of vegetables here. And we're just going to add this to our stock pot. I'm just going to add my bunch of parsley. I'm going to fill this up an inch from the top with cold water. Now cold water really brings out the flavor of the stock because it's been oxidized and it really just brings out the flavor of the vegetables and the meat. So you want to use cold water, not hot. And there we have it. Now we're going to take this and carry this over to the stove. Alright, we've placed this on the stove and as you can see here, I have a double burner. And I'm going to turn them both on. Turn them on high. You can see that. Remember to use a burner that fits the size of the pan. Add thyme from my garden. We're going to add some sage from the garden. We're going to add some oregano, just a pinch of oregano, not much. And I'm going to use a little bit of rosemary. A little bit of ground salt. And you don't have to salt your stocks. This can be salt free. This is already MSG free and it is also fat free. And, um, and of course you can just throw in some whole peppercorns. Um, I use my favorite mix because it has a little bit of heat in there to the red. So I use a five uh, pepper mix and you can just throw in the whole peppercorns. Okay, this is my husband, John. He's in the military and he's home from his active duty service and he's getting ready to retire. So we're a capping and he's going to help me here. So go ahead. This is time. He's going to put some time in his hand. There you go. Now I want you to be careful. That's hot over there. I just take it. That's it. Rub it in your hands. Crush those seeds and get that uh, scent out of the out of the herbs, out of those leaves. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and have him salt this as well. Now, not a lot. Remember we discussed about salt going in when you're baking your uh, stock and using it for your soups or whatever you're going to make your stock with, so or use your stock for. So go ahead and add some salt. This is just grinding some rock sea salt to a boil, and I mean a full boil from the center out, and then we're going to lower this to a simmer. Put on here. And again, I used the glass lid so that I could see what I was, you know, see what's happening in the pot and then we used one with a steam vent. And this is going to simmer on the stove for about three and a half to four hours. You can go up to five hours if you like, but that should be plenty of time to get a nice, rich tasting stock. We'll see you in a couple hours. Okay, our stock has simmered for around three hours. 
and um, we're going to take it over now. We've let it cool for a little while here. It's still bubbling a little bit. And you can let this cool longer, but I'm kind of running out of time. So we're going to go ahead and take this over to our draining station, and we're going to strain this. Now, we're going to take our large uh, roasting pan, and we're going to place it here down into the sink to take the same wooden sticks that I used earlier today. I'm going to raise the cinnamon rolls and I'm going to put those across the top and then I'm going to place my colander on top of that. Now on the colander we're going to place our cheesecloth. Now I don't use just any cheesecloth, not even a craft cheesecloth. This is actually like a, like a thin handkerchief type material. If you don't have this then I suggest that you use a nice clean dish towel. Now, it's for obvious reasons why we're sitting the colander on the boards. It's so that our colander doesn't sit down inside of the liquid. That wouldn't be a good thing because then it wouldn't drain. Okay, so now we're ready to drain our soup stock. Okay, this is where John comes in. Now he's going to help me pour this into the colander and I'll kind of hold it still. Now you want to keep pets and kids back from this because it does splash. And this is still very hot. Go slow. Oh. Okay, let's okay. continue to drain this. When we get back so far, I'm going to kind of hold the meat back like this. There we go. I'm losing a little bit of it off the, the board, but okay, now we're to this stage. We're going to go ahead and we're going to remove the bones. Okay, we're going to remove those bones into the garbage. Now you don't want to eat any of this, this remainder stuff here. Okay, now we've taken the bones out and we're just going to finish getting all of these pieces of vegetables into the colander. Okay, now we're just going to take the remaining vegetables and we're just going to kind of press them on through the sieve here. Get the majority of those juices through the cheesecloth and then we're going to let this sit and drain for about 10 minutes. Okay, now we're going to fold up the corners of the cheesecloth. There we go. And he's going to kind of squeeze the juices, the remaining juices out of those vegetables and that meat. We want as much of that roasted flavor as we can get. John's giving looks. It's hot, huh? It's hot. <laughs> Usually I let it cool a little bit more, but since tomorrow's a work day, I didn't want to be up waking everybody up. Okay, and here we've just put it in here. It's still hot. I just pulled this out of the sink, and you can already see this gelatin starting to form across the top and the yellow here that's the fat this is what makes this virtually fat free broth or stock. Okay, so we've covered this with plastic wrap and we're going to let this cool for about two or three hours and then we're going to place this in the refrigerator for 48 hours that's two days now i'm just going to use a slotted spoon and I'm just going to skim the top and finish getting these smaller pieces of fat off the stock, off our beef stock. Now, this is what makes this beef stock virtually fat free. I mean, look how rich this is. You can't get that out of a can. So this is Chef Janie Pendleton for Gluten Free Foods. Enjoy. <music>